Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. This is a Xeon E3 1275V5 and I have a couple of these CPUs that I really don't know what to do with. That's why I decided to search on AliExpress and see maybe I can find some interesting LJ1151 motherboards to do some content and finally get some use for these CPUs. I found Soyo H311M motherboard and I had some hopes for this board because I got to believe that Soyo is somehow a respectable brand on AliExpress. I bought the motherboard for about 50 euros, it was actually slightly under that at the 1111 sale and it arrived to me not long ago. Right now I no longer have the motherboard because it went back to China. And let me tell you how it all went because I have done all my standard testing regardless. Starting with unboxing, I was immediately and unpleasantly surprised because one of the corners on my motherboard is damaged and I struggle to understand how such a damage could happen inside a cardboard box. So I tend to believe that the motherboard was dropped onto the floor before it was shipped to me and they didn't bother to check that. Then I have spotted marking on the motherboard which would state ZX-H311D4 and I have pretty bad experience with every motherboard I have tested that comes from this ZX manufacturer in China. They produce lots of low-quality no-name motherboards for AliExpress to sell, but sometimes they also do motherboards for known AliExpress brands such as Machinist, Juan Andre Chiyida or Soyo in this case. So immediately after seeing this marking I expected the worst and I was not disappointed. The biggest issue with the motherboard I have got is the memory compatibility. I don't know if this is a consequence of the damage that the motherboard was dropped or is just a generally low quality motherboard and pretty bad bias. But very often when I install two memory sticks the motherboard would refuse to boot with several beeps. Then I shuffle the sticks back and forth, back and forth, reset BIOS and try to boot and sometimes it boots with the two memory sticks, but most of the time it would refuse to boot with the two memory sticks and would boot with just one memory stick. This could happen when the motherboard has pretty bad memory power delivery system or there are bad contacts or there are some cracks in PCB or the BIOS memory training mechanism is just atrociously bad. In certain cases when I have the motherboard working fine with two memory sticks, whenever I try to enable XMP profile in the BIOS, the motherboard again refuses to boot with the same beeps. On top of this deal-breaking issue with memory compatibility, we also have lots of Chinese limitations and quirks. For example, the motherboard does not support sleep mode, the smartphone function is very limited and works only for the CPU fan header and only with 4-pin fans, and unfortunately the motherboard does not support uh, a resizable bar, the motherboard does not support FTPM or Intel PTT, which is basically firmware TPM. So if you would have a CPU such as i5-8400 that has built-in TPM or technically has it when firmware and BIOS supports it, on this motherboard you do not have that. And the motherboard also does not have any external headers to install an external TPM. So even though you could have a technically compatible CPU with Windows 11, with this Soyo H311 motherboard, you would not be able to get Windows 11 fully compatible with the motherboard. The CPU temperature is also not shown properly in the BIOS. The VRM on the motherboard is also pretty poor. I have tested with a 4-core 8-thread E31275 V5. I believe this one has 80 watt TDP and I have used this CPU because this is the highest TDP CPU I have for the socket. Using this 4-core Xeon, the VRM temperatures went up to 70 degrees Celsius when measuring from the backwards, running ADA64 stress test. So you could imagine that if you would install something like uh, i7-8700K or 9700K, the VRM will most likely cook itself and not to even consider something like 9900K.
Out of the box, the motherboard supports all Intel consumer CPUs such as i3, i5, i7, i9 from 7th to 9th generation, which is very nice. Once again, we are denying Intel's uh, artificial partitioning of the platforms because the LJ1151 socket is identical. I have tested with an i5 A2400 and even though the motherboard comes with the chipset H110, not H310, and H110 is the first generation, it works perfectly fine with the i5-8400, which is the next generation of LJ1151 socket. Unfortunately though, these Xeon E3 CPUs do not boot out of the box on the Soyo H311M motherboard. That is pretty easy to fix, because the BIOS can be read and written using FPT program from Windows, and the BIOS itself can be easily modified using Coffee Time application to add support for these Xeon E3 CPUs. I did exactly that, and then I have tested E3 1275v5 and E3 1275v6. Both of the CPUs worked just fine, they were detected. What's more important is that with this BIOS modification, i5-8400 still worked just fine. The BIOS modification is available in my Mi 899 application, and there you will also find the original BIOS for Soyo H311M motherboard. Of course, there you will also find a compatible version of Intel FPT program to flush the BIOS, or you could just use Mi 899 interface to flush your Soyo H311M motherboard BIOS if you happen to have such a motherboard. Other than that, I really don't have much extra to say. Unfortunately, Soyo H311M is a pretty basic motherboard with poor quality and poor connectivity from the infamous ZX manufacturer that is producing lots of uh, low-quality, no-name motherboards. If you happen to have the motherboard and it works for you, well, I am happy. But in all other cases, I do not recommend buying this motherboard. If the motherboard would at least come in mini ITX package, well, then I could justify some of the flaws and forgive some of the limitations, such as poor connectivity and poor VRM. But the current size is greater than mini ITX and it is also greater than mini DTX, so you really need a micro ATX chassis for that. And with micro ATX format, you have much better options with much higher demands. Probably you would want to be able to install something like i7-8700K or i9-9900K. Not that these CPUs are good or cheap, but if you are building a micro ATX PC, you probably would want your motherboard to have some sort of a TDP headroom and do not cook itself with the 6 or 8 core CPUs. With this being said, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was helpful and see you in the next videos. Thank you.